Greeting from Ace Engineering College, myself Muhammad Yunus, Technical Trainer in Training and Placement Cell. Continue to the earlier video, today we are going to talk about the preparation strategy for Infosys certification exam, in short, in short called as InfiTQ. InfiTQ is a platform by Infosys where students can register themselves to get Infosys certified and get a job as a system engineer in Infosys. Continuing to the preparation strategy, we will talk about what is the exam pattern for the round 1. There will be 20 multiple choice questions comes from 4 different modules. Module 1, programming fundamental using Python. Module 2 is about object oriented programming using Python. Module 3 is about data structures and algorithm and module 4 is database management system. If you ask me what is the difficulty level of uh, the questions, then it will be moderate to difficult level. We will see a couple of questions today so that you can understand the difficulty level of this question. Next, you will be getting to hands on session. So, you will get enough time to take this multiple choice question and hands on session. You will be getting around 3 hours to solve this problem. So, take up your enough time to solve the multiple choice question and the hands on session. Once you know the exam pattern, you may be wondering where to prepare for this InfiTQ exam to crack. So, let me tell you this InfiTQ platform is available for both web as well as mobile. So, you can sign in for the web application or you can download the mobile application and start exploring. Let me take you to the platform. Once you log in to this platform, uh, this is your dashboard. You will find all the four modules here. In this video, as we are discussing about uh, module 1, let me take you to the module 1. Module 1 contains two parts. Programming fundamental using Python part 1, which talks about the uh, language, Python language construct and it also, uh, you all know that Python is known for the simplicity and flexibility and especially it is a best language for the beginners. And this fundamental concept of programming discussed in this course would enable the beginners to design, to write and debug your code. Let me tell you it is beautifully designed where you will find uh, the videos, the animated contents or the contest and uh, like in the form of quizzes, in the form of exercises, in the form of assignments and all. Same you will be having programming fundamental part 2 where you will learn some advanced concepts like especially like uh, unit testing, how to debug your code, how to write your robust code, how to organize your application and also some high important uh, concepts you will be learning in this module. Now, let me take you to the module 1 syllabus in depth. So, module 1 as you all know that divided into part 1 and part 2. Let me show you the syllabus content here. So, module 1 comprises of introduction to programming. So, here you should know the uh, fundamentals of programming, what is ex exactly mean by programming, why you need programming and then followed by basics of algorithm and pseudocode. In this you will learn how to write an algorithm, how to write a pseudocode. Let me tell you this platform has a beautiful uh, content in the form of animation where you will enjoy learning this basic concepts like algorithm and pseudocode. Followed by python basics where you will be learning what is mean by variables, what is mean by data types, what are the different operators available in python, what is implicit explicit type conversion followed by the flow control. In flow control, you are going to learn about if statement, okay, different forms of if statement like simple if, if else, elif and followed by iterative statements like while and for statement. Then you are going to take a, uh, the important topic like strings, list and tuple and let me tell you uh, this is the area where you, need to, where you need to be very good with because uh, I told you there will be two hands on questions, mostly it will be from this last two topics. Okay. Anyhow, you need to be good with all the topics here, but most of the time your questions will be either from the strings, list, dictionary. These are the three major areas you need to be master in for cracking that two coding or hands on session. Followed by you will be learning about uh, functions and recursion. 
what are the different types of parameters, different types of arguments you got in function, how do we pass the arguments to the function, how do we return the value to the uh, caller, okay, and you will be learning about the recursion, okay, followed by the exception handling in Python, you will learn how to write your robust code by handling the er exceptions or the errors in Python. Then you will be learning about modules and packages, like how, what is uh, built in modules and how do you create your user defined modules and you will be talking about like how do you write your own packages. And finally, you will be talking about like file handlings in Python, like how do you open a file, how do you close a file, how do you read the data from the file and how do you write the data from the file. Now let me take you to the last step which you are all waiting for, the preparation plan. So as I told you that uh, the InfiTQ platform is more than enough for uh, preparing for uh, this InfiTQ exam to crack, uh, which comprises, uh, as I told you that module one contains part one and part two. So once you uh, learn the concepts in the form of video, in the form of uh, animation, in the form of content, okay, then there will be around 15 quizzes in these two parts, part one and part two. And each quiz is comprises of almost uh, 10 to 15 questions. So overall you will be solving some 150 to 200 quizzes from moderate level to high level. That will be more than enough to crack your InfiTQ exam. Followed by there are two assessments uh, in the quizzes from each part. So I would recommend once you take up these quizzes, okay, and uh, you should go for the assessment for the each one. So there will be around 20 questions on the assessment. Uh, one and assessment two. Let me tell you in the quizzes you can uh, uh, submit your quiz okay Af even if it is wrong you can resubmit your quiz and check where you went wrong okay it will display the answers as well. So I believe that if you do mistake no problem learn from that mistake and get back but whereas in the assessment okay there, the answers will be displayed at the end only okay you have to take up this assessment after completing all the quizzes. Then followed by 50 plus assignments are available okay, on this all the concepts, all the syllabus which, we, which I have discussed. These assignments not only help you uh, for understanding the concept, these assignments will also help you for cracking that two coding questions. Let me take you to sample quiz. So once you go to this platform, you can see uh, the content like uh, you wanted to take a quiz on uh, selection control structure. So if we click on it, it will show you all the sub content here. Uh, suppose you have take, uh, you have read all the content, now you wanted to take a quiz out of it. So once you click on this quiz, this will take you to the next page, which tells you what is the difficulty level, uh, what is the duration, uh, like it gives you like you can solve this quiz in 35 minutes and what are the number of questions. Once you click on this start, start button, they will give you all the quiz in the same window. And here uh, they are asking you, you need to uh, tell what is the output of the given code below. So you need to trace out this code and you need to tell what is the output of this code. To do this, let me take you to the window and let us solve this problem now. As given in this problem, uh, they ask you like what is the output of the below given code. Uh, here they have given couple of uh, variables. Let us say the give variable name is num1, the value for the num1 has been given as 100. Then they have taken, they have given another variable by name num2 and the value of that variable is 200. And third variable here where by name num3 and the value of this is being given as 6. Now they are asking you whether this condition is true or false. Now let us test it. So if, let me substitute the value here that uh, they have asked whether 5 is greater than or equal to num3 and we know that num3 value is 6 so if I substitute 6 here this condition evaluates to false. Once it evaluates to false, it will uh, not go inside this if statement. So do not uh, uh, waste your time uh, evaluating this nested if, simply you can go for else if now. In else if, in else if statement, they asked you uh, what is, uh, is the condition true or false. Now let us check, substitute this num1 value which is 100. So is it 100 greater than or equal to 100? Yes, it is true, it is true. And the second condition they have given is num2 which is 200 is greater than 150. This condition is also true. And we know that in logical AND operator, 
if first condition is true and the second condition is also true it will go inside and then the output will be printed as 2 so for the given code the answer is 2 so once we trace out we go back to this and we can say the answer for the given question is 2 similarly you will be having a different level of questions some of them are moderate some of them are difficult so please similar way you trace out the code here and take up the uh, answers let's say for the given code let's say answer is num1 is 5 and num2 is equal to 1 for this given code they are asking which codes are similar let's say code 1 and code 2 is similar and for this particular code they are asking what is the output again so let's say the code uh, output of this code is 44 and once i click on this submit button they are asking you do you really want to submit you can uh, say no and you can if you have a doubt in any of this you can go and check that uh, again and you can resubmit it and once you confirm that okay you are very much uh, co uh, confident about the questions you click on the yes so once you click on yes they tells you that thank you for your attempt and the number of correct answers you have you got number of incorrect answers you got and any of the question you unanswered it will uh, take you to there and what is the percentage you got it as i told you that uh, if you get any incorrect answer no need to worry you can resubmit your code any number of times there is no limit for it uh, you can also like if you are like number of times you have attempted you are not sure that whether your answers uh, uh, are correct or wrong you can also ask them to show the answer so it will show all the answers here so these quizzes are majorly for practicing it let me take you to couple of assignments so in the first module there is a assignment set one if you click on this you can find the number of assignments okay so let me take you to the first assignment one of the very interesting assignment here uh, which uh, as a uh, like a animated one so let's take it up so you need to write a pseudo code to move the start s this uh, uh, box you have to move it from the start to the end there are uh, some bombs here you need to just arrange this pseudo code in a fashion so that you can make this box to the end and i tell you it's a wonderful way of learning so let me put this uh, boxes into the given uh, code here now in the place so let me drag and drop so what i need to do that first of all i need to say them uh, loop keep looping until it finds to the end one so i'll take this loop one and i'll place it here now i'm saying that until my start will not equals to n you keep looping it you go till the end then if you find any bomb so i'll take an if statement and say that if you're finding any bomb then what you need to do is you need to move down so i'll say that you move down okay for the first time so again you move down for the second time so i'll keep uh, the next one here now and i say that you move it down for the second time so you see i found a bomb then i have to move it down and then i have to move it down again and then if uh, it is uh, found a if it is not a bomb then what you have to do there is an else statement so you can put an else statement and you say them keep moving right okay keep moving right here now so you keep moving right until you find the bomb now end of the if statement so if statement is ended here so let me drag and drop here so end of the if statement okay and finally end of the while statement of the while statement now once you are confident please submit and you can see that the cursor is moving and we got our code submitted so this is congratulations you have reached the destination and you cleared it so this is one of the assignment let me take you to the another assignment uh, which is from uh, assignment 2 the first one so the assignment 2 here if you click on this assignment 2 this will take you to the next question uh, which is coding one so i uh, let us see one of the coding question they are asking you uh, to write a python program to find and display the product of the three positive integers value based on the rule mentioned what is the rule they mention uh, they said that if the display the product of the three values except one of the integer value 7 so you you say for example they have given some sample test cases here uh, if there is no 7 then you have to find the product of it like uh, 1 into 5 into 3 will give you 7 uh, 15 now in uh, if 7 is present then what you need to do is if one of the value is 7 the left should not be included like here now 3 7 and 8 so left part should not be included so it will only calculate 8 here now if uh, the 7 is at the beginning then obviously you can multiply this uh, the number 2 and number 3 and if uh, the 7 is at the end then you have to display minus 1 if no value will be included in the product then you have to display minus 1 here 
and what they are saying assume that 7 is one of the positive integer value then it will occur only once and you need to refer to the sample input and output let's start coding here now okay this is the given code here so you says that uh, uh, there is a function called find product and they have given uh, the num1 num2 and num3 value as the three product uh, three arguments here and this is our main code where they ask you like uh, to find the product and they have passing three values here 7 6 and 2 S and they are uh, calling this uh, and they whatever the product is getting written and they are getting printed here let me start writing my logic here now so what is the logic it says that if my num1 value is not equal to 7 and num2 value is not equal to 7 and num3 value is not equal to 7 if all of them are not 7 then they said in the question then you have to find the product so i'll take a variable called product is equal to i need to say that num1 multiply with num2 multiply with num3 okay so i just multiply all of them to calculate the product of it else if if it is not correct lf okay if num1 is equal equal to 7 if first itself is equal equal to 7 and num2 is not equal to 7 and num3 is not equal to 7 num3 is not equal to 7 then you can find the product okay you can the find the product as num3 multiply by num2 or num you can find the product is equal to num2 multiply with num3 num2 multiply with num3 okay now finally else elif so i'll write elif here if it says that num1 is not equal to 7 okay and num2 is equal equal to 7 num2 is equal equal to 7 and num3 is not equal to 7 then you don't you uh, in this case what you can do simply you can say that uh, product is equal to num3 so num3 is not equal to 7 so here you can go and say product is equal to num3 because the left part you don't have to consider here now finally you can write else if none of the condition satisfy then give product is equal to minus 1 and give product is equal to minus 1 so here we seen if all of them are not equal to 7 we calculate all the product if num1 is 7 and num2 and num3 is uh, not 7 then uh, just find the product of num2 and num3 if num1 is not equal to 7 num2 is equal equal to 7 then simply assign because left part you have to you don't have to consider simply assign the product and uh, otherwise you need to uh, assign the product as minus 1 that is the code then you can execute your code and you can check the expected output so the expected our output is coming it as 12 So once you get the expected output, then you can verify your code by clicking on the verify button. That will tell you what are the total number of uh, test cases. Eight test cases and eight of them are getting passed. Okay, and uh, two structural and six logical are there, and all you are getting the result as right. So once you confirm with the verify, you can click on the submit button. That will submit your code. So this is the platform you need to work on all the assignments. Now the only mantra for cracking this InfiTQ exam. is practice 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 there is no substitute for practice along with the quizzes uh, the assessment and the assignment i want you to take up all the previous year questions and practice all of the question before the exam and all the very best for our infosys infitq aspirant and do like and share thank you very much